in regards to the plunger switch, you can see it kind of has all been pre-bent. It's got, it's got the little plastic grommets there, the Christmas trees. Uh, just very carefully put some penetrating oil in there and gently uh, tap them up from underneath with a hammer. And now uh, this here, I believe is 19 millimeter. Put a little penetrating oil around there and I'll be unthreading this because obviously the piece of the truss, I've got, uh, I got a piece that's gonna end up going in here like so, and will be too close for the welding. So I wanna get that out. And then when it goes back in, of course I'll use some Teflon and so forth, but um, that should come out pretty easy. That particular switch, if you were to, uh, if you were to have to repurchase this plunger switch, uh, I found it online for like $130 for the Mopar one. But uh, I've never had a problem with this plunger switch. So I'm very carefully gonna unthread this. It should come out nice and uh, go back in and I shouldn't have a problem with it. Using a three quarter wrench, but 19 mil would have worked perfectly. Didn't take much. I just gotta straighten that out and continue to unthread it. So pretty cut and dry. Okay, the plunger switch. Threads out of there nice. You can see there was a little thread sealing on there. A little spring in there. So remember when you install the locker, you need to put a little match and some fishing line in there and hold that out so that the plate goes underneath it. Then you pull the fishing line, then that closes on the plate because as the uh, plate goes in and out, when the solenoid gets engaged and disengaged, it pulls this switch outward and that's what gives you your padlock symbol that you're locked or you're not locked. So uh, nice little switch right here. Relatively easy to remove. Shouldn't be any problem putting it back in. I'll get everything cleaned up nice. Put this aside. And of course my new locker actuator plug. This is the plug that sits right on top of your axle housing. You can see it's got a gasket on it. That bolt right there is what holds it into position. And then the locker plugs into it. Now, what generally breaks on this, this becomes very brittle, is this outside piece of plastic right here. So uh, mine was messed up, I think, when I installed it a year or two ago when I changed the inner axle seal. So for $50, I bought a new Mopar uh, locker actuator plug. Uh, I got this from Morris 4x4 down in Florida, I believe. So. So that's in the go position and uh, we're doing well. Mopar two piece seals. Spicer one piece seal. Either of them fit nicely with the seal insert tool i checked them no problem there so we'll see which ones i go with I, it, you know it's interesting when you look at the mopar ones these two-piece seals they look really heavy duty they've got a they've got like a gasket seal it a gasket sealant around it um uh, heavier this seems lighter more of a simple approach but this may be the way i go because uh tim says he's had such good luck with these simple spicer seals the Yukon uh, inner seal insert tool. Of course, the locker. Got to give AutoZone some love. Um, my my pads I took out were hardly even used, but they're lifetime warranty. This is you want a new set, just bring the old ones in. So, so as you know, I put new pads and rebuilt the e-brakes in the rear. Now there'll be brand new pads in the front. The RCV outer tube seals, I'm going to order the uh, inserts. I'm going to get all new pieces for that and new new gaskets. Only $30. Thought I, thought I might as well do it. Mopar plunger switch comes out pretty easy. No problem whatsoever. Brand new Mopar locker actuator. Uh, this is the piece that goes through the axle housing. Got a brand new one. 
Five sixteenths, eighteen bolts. Got some new bolts for the uh, armor differential cover. So we're doing pretty good. 